Kumo Honglu is perhaps the most notable of the 1600 IDs on release. The online community were stunned at how a 00 ID was better than most 000 IDs. But why? What made him special? Cloudcutter. Seriously, that's all it took. A pesky enemy in Kanto 1? Cloudcutter. Wow, that's gone. The entirety of Los Mariachis? Just give him a second. Mm hmm. And there we go. Yep, done. Enemy in Kanto 3? A little bit harder, but boy, he'll break through eventually. Cloudcutter on Cromer? Oh, actually, you probably shouldn't do that, but you could. Yes, Cloudcutter is good. Great, perhaps even broken. Man, makes you wonder how he does in Hard Mirror Dungeon. He's a 0 0 ID, so we can bring him in for free. Since he's so powerful, I'm sure he'll cut down my enemies with grace and splendor and. Ah. Here we get into the thesis of this video. Kurakubo Honglu, at his core, is a confusing and, dare I say, badly designed ID. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning with his stats and skills. Do note, I will be using his stats and skills at level 35 and up type 4. For his stats, they are average, slightly above average for his speed and health, but not substantially so. The things that do stand out are his non-existent offense level, as well as his plus 2 to defense level. We'll talk about those in a second, so keep them in mind. For now, we move on to his skills. Firstly, we have Cleave. I know the graphics is hack and the game says that it's hack, but it's Cleave. It's been that way since the beginning of the game. Why did they change the skill names in Uptight 4? Anyways, Cleave is a pretty average skill 1. Rolls an 11, inflicts some bleed. It's not anything worth getting upset over. Let's skip to his skill 3 for now. Cloudburst. This is also pretty standard for a skill 3. Rolling a 13 is technically a little better than what a skill like this usually gets, but that doesn't matter as much as you might think. Remember that non-existent offense level? For those who don't know, whenever you initiate a clash, both your offense level and the offense level of the attack you clash against are taken into consideration. Say you are using Kurakumo Honglu and you're clashing against this guy. You use Cloudburst and they use a single coin skill with a floor of 11 and a ceiling of 14. Kurakumo Honglu's offense level is the bog standard of 35, and the enemy has an offense level of 43. There is a difference of 8 between Kurakumo Honglu and the enemy's offense level here. In a clash, for every and only every 3 offense level between the two, the character with a higher number gains one more power in a clash. In this instance, this leads to an unwinnable clash, since your opponent now has a 13 floor and a 17 ceiling, and Cloudburst can only roll to a max of 13. Of course, this won't always be the case. But higher offense levels for enemies are the future, so being an ID whose only utility is damage, but also having a worse offense level than Chef Gregor is the first part of Kirkumo Honglu's strange design. One last note, the 6 paralysis on Cloudburst is an interesting addition. Since he is above average speed, this should be really useful, right? Except the most popular IDs right now are usually at that same speed range, or a little faster making it a nice yet somewhat inconsistent support tool, especially since it's on his skill 3. Getting back on track, his skill 2, Cloud Cutter. Horribly, terribly, beautifully broken. A 4 coin skill on any team that does not have exactly Kurakuma Ryoshu and Rhino Murso. Uh, hold on, Kurakuma Ryoshu? Why doesn't he synergize with his fellow clanmate? This is the second of Kurakuma Honglu's strange design choices and is the most glaring by far. Despite being able to inflict some of the most bleed potency in the game, Kurukumo Honglu is punished for running too much bleed with him. I understand this may have been on purpose, some passive-aggressive way of nerfing him, but it seems like Cloudcutter should have instead become a 4-coin skill when the enemy has 4-plus bleed count, not below. Instead, Kurukumo Honglu is estranged from his archetype. So is that it? Not quite. There is one more skill to talk about. This guard skill is terrible. It's less relevant than the other skills, sure, but the point still stands. A 9-12 guard after up 4 is just real bad. The vast majority of guard skills were buffed. Look at all these characters who guards were buffed in some way. Yet this one was left alone. Leaving Kurokumo Honglu with a pathetic option if all of his skills are hopeless to clash with. But thank god he has a plus 2 defense level. Seriously, he gets plus 2. 
Was he meant to be a defense-oriented ID? This would make sense if Cloud Cutter needed 4 plus bleed count to activate its condition, since he would have to rely on his allies to rack up the bleed count for him first, but instead... Nope. Just a bad guard, but good defense level. Mirroring the great skill too, but bad offense level. It's weirdly frustrating. Every other ID in the game has a kit that feels cohesive, has synergy with other IDs with similar mechanics, but Kirkum Hong Lu, he just doesn't follow those rules. He has anti-synergy with the people he should synergize with, his damage is insane, but his offense level is low, he just doesn't make any sense. But none of it matters. Every insult I sling at Kurakuma Hong Lu does not change what he was made to do. He will always be relevant, so long as he has it. Cloud Cutter. It doesn't matter if he loses clashes 80% of the time. In content where you don't need everyone clashing at once, Kurakuma Hong Lu just ignores everything and does an unopposed attack. He doesn't need synergy. He doesn't need offense level. He doesn't need a usable defense skill. He doesn't need to make sense. All he needs, all he is, is Cloud Cutter. Thanks for watching. This video ends 